everybody. Welcome to Deep Dive Wednesday. This is Pastor Mike, and I'm excited to be here because I'm on a pastor's retreat on the Big Island, and, you know, we need to retreat. And it's part of what we studied uh, when it comes to the Good Shepherd, that the Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters, and he restores my soul. So right now, my, my soul is getting restored <laughs> by being around my brothers, where we laugh, we eat, we golf, and we just have the best time so that I can be restored and continue to do what God called me to do. One of my best friends, if not my best friend in the whole world, is sitting right next to me. His name is Pastor Roger Archer, and he is preaching this weekend with his beautiful wife, Tina, not telling you where they're going, but we're telling you that they're coming, and they're going to be with us uh, on the weekend. But I thought, you know, I'm with him. Why don't I just ask you to come and do Deep Dive Wednesday with me, take a little bit of load off, but also talk about our friendship uh, and Psalm 23. So this weekend... We talked about the Lord is my shepherd. It was about the key to my confidence. Where do I get my confidence from? Because there are going to be times when your confidence will waver. Uh, You will be fearful. Where where does my help come from? Where does my confidence come from? Last week, we talked, two weeks ago, we talked about, we talked about, um, what was, gosh, (laughs) I forget already. We talked about, this week was confidence. Last week was contentment. The key, the secret to my contentment, why I am content. Um, I'm always content, but never complacent. So today we're going to take this a little bit deeper in verse three of Psalm 23. He says, he guides me in paths of righteousness for the sake of his name. Right. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And so when I read these verses, they mean a lot to me. So this is where my confidence comes from, because I can walk through every valley, no matter what's going to go. Whatever happens, either in a valley, coming out of a valley, headed for a valley, whatever it is. But I have this confidence and we have this hope knowing that Christ in us is the hope of glory and we can get through anything. But I thought Roger would be perfect to give us some uh, insight on that. Roger. Great. Uh, you know what I really love about your pastor and your church, among many things, is their uh, unwavering desire to take you deeper into the things of God. Because um, there is a flywheel, if you will, uh, of effect of maturity in the faith of Christ. And here's what it looks like. It's a, if you can imagine a triangle having three sides, you have to have the information to create the inspiration to ensue the transformation. And when those three things start spinning, you start growing. Mm. So many churches, Mike, and you've seen them, they'll have a lot of information, but it's all head stuff. Mm. And they don't get their heart engaged. Yeah. And, and then there, there are some churches that are all just fluffy and emotional and crazy, but they don't get their mind engaged. Mm. So the, the, the cause and effect of those two limitations is they don't have a good growth um, platform for their developmental process. And what you guys do so well at Inspire Church um, is you have the information to create the inspiration that causes the transformation. So let's dive deep in into this passage. So that's the spirit and truth coming together. Spirit and truth. The right. spirit and truth, right? Those who worship me will worship in spirit and truth. The spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the truth, the truth of the word of God. That's right. Coming together. A hundred percent. And and you guys do that exceptionally well. You and, Thank you. You and Pastor Lisa are incredible. Guys, in yeah, praise the Lord. So let's drill down and do some core samples of, 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 of that verse. Okay. First of all, uh, I'm looking at it when he says... Uh, even though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death. Now, in the Bible, there's a science for interpreting the Bible, and that science is perfect. And there's seven, count them, seven laws of interpretation. And the third law is that the original writing can never mean more doctrinally. That, that's a big word. That's an important word for us, because doctrine is how we engage God. So the original writing of Scripture can never mean more doctrinally than what the original writer was writing to the original reader. So whatever the original writer was trying to communicate to that original reader, that's it. That's doctrine. So you can't make more or less of it than what that original intent was. So I love it when when David, who wrote the 23rd Psalm, said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear fear no evil for you are not with me. So you said the Lord is my confidence last week, right? And in in, uh, southern, in Judea, in the wilderness of Judea, where David would have been a shepherd, there's a geographical, literal place called the Valley of the Shadow of Death, which is um, an overcropping of rocks that the sun only hits it when it's directly overhead. But all other times, it's shadowlands. Right. It's dark. 
That's where the hyenas and wolves hang out. That's where marauders hang out. That's where uh, the interlopers would reside. And so if, if, if a sheep ever wandered away from the flock, they would occasionally find themselves in the valley of the shadow of death. And you know that if rustlers are there, if hyenas are there, you probably ain't coming out alive, right? Uh-huh. If, you're, if you're a helpless little sheep uh-huh. and you don't have the protection of the flock, yeah. you're in danger. You're in dinner. You're, you are, you're lamb chops. Yeah. Yes, that's <laughs> right, right? Yeah. And so, and so da- what David is saying, as a, pertaining to the law of hermeneutics, is that David said, hey, I'm a sheep, mm-hmm. right? I, that's the metaphor, I'm a sheep. Yeah. He said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because I got great big sheep shanks or sheep biceps or sheep quads. I have sheep machine gun. No, I have the Lord God Almighty, yeah. my, my protector, my defender, my, the protector of, my, of myself. And so we got this great confidence, right. right? Yeah. So you and I have experienced that in different points of our life. Oh, yeah. Where we've, we've battled dark times. Mm-hmm. But even though, and because sometimes I think people think that pastors are exempt. No. <laughs> I, I think I think we're targets. No. I don't think we're exempt, right? No, um, we're not. But but what we all know together no. is targets. that we're all sheep. We're actually bigger targets. Bigger targets. But we're all sheep. Yeah. And so, so sheep. we are have that protection even even in those dark places. Yeah. The second thing that he says is your rod and your staff. They come for me. I find that really interesting because. Uh, a shepherd's staff, even though it's one implement, it serves as two. Because you'll notice every shepherd in every uh, piece of artwork that you'll see, they'll have a long stick with a hook on it. Well, he, sa- he says, your rod and your staff, they come from me. So the staff portion of that stick is the hooky part because there'd be occasions when these sheep would wander in these enter- into these um, thickets of thorns and those Mediterranean thorns are one inch. I mean, those are bad dogs, not rose thorns, Mediterranean thorns. Mm. And if a sheep gets stuck in there with the wool and they're intertangled, the shepherd can't go in and get them. So he'll literally get that hook around the shepherd's neck and <laughs> pull that thing out. On the sheep's neck. On the sheep's neck. Or right. if they fall into a body of water and they can't get out, that mm-hmm. hook will rescue, right? The sheep. The other end right. is the rod. Now, Sheep, I, I love the fact that God says you are my sheep because we kind of take on that metaphorical picture, right? Um, and sometimes sheep are just flat out naughty. <laughs> yeah. We 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 do things they're bad sheep. They're bad. No, we, they go bad. They go bad. They're not bad sheep. Right. They, go, the bad. they, they go bad. Or they do bad things. They do bad things. They're naughty. Yeah. So occasionally, over and over and over and over and over again, if a sheep keeps getting in the thicket and getting in the water and re- re- threatening their very life, that the shepherd will then turn that staff around, take the rod, and literally break the hind leg of the sheep. Right. Then, guess what that shepherd does? He'll pick up the sheep, put it over his shoulders, and you poor carry sheep. it. You poor sheep. You, poor you sheep. know I love you. But you you're going to stop being naughty. So sometimes when we go through painful things, we right. think like, God, you're against me. God, what's this all about? And God says, no, no, no. My rod and my staff. Sometimes I'm going to rescue you. Sometimes I'm going to pull you out. And sometimes I'm going to stop you because you're going to hurt yourself if I don't. But that rod is also an implement in order to defend the sheep from sheep's clothing, from yep. the attack of the lion, the bear, like David said. I wish David had mentioned your, sl- your rod, your staff, and slingshot. But he didn't because <laughs> yeah. he used that slingshot to kill Goliath, right? right. But your rod and your staff, they come from me. It, it, it comforts me knowing that you will come for me. Yeah. You will come after me. Right. And it does comfort me because I need to know my boundaries. Yeah. You watch a kid who has no boundaries. That's a key rule. They're asking for boundaries because yeah. they're testing, testing, testing. Where's my boundaries? Where's my boundaries? No boundaries. Your kid got no boundaries. Then you have to show them what the boundary line is. And that's what the rod does as well. The rod not only defends, but it also is used as um, discipline. Well, and you know, the Apostle Paul says in the New Testament uh, that he disciplines all those whom he loves. He goes, you're treated as sons and daughters if you're yeah. disciplined. Yeah. Otherwise, you're illegitimate. Right. And we're right. not I'm not going to spank somebody else's kids. No. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, maybe growing up, growing up in the Big Island, they did yeah. that. Yeah. You know? Your auntie. <laughs> your auntie got you. <laughs> 
<laughs> Rub a slip up. Boom. I know, but that <laughs> develops deep the resentment, right? Because yep. that happened. Yep. That develops deep resentment in, in a child. So God's only going to discipline those that he loves because if he loves you, you're his child. So he's, he's disciplining you. So there's that level of the rod of correction and the rod of protection. Ooh, that, I just made that up. That will preach. Spot. That was on the spot. That already, is already, really good. I already preached last the week. Rod the rod of protection, the rod of correction. So good. I got the interjection. <laughs> we start rapping. We'll, we'll stop right there. I'm not a good rapper. I'll, I'll stay in my lane. I, I think we need to go deeper. This is Deep Dive Wednesday. We just went shallow. Now yeah. we're going back. <laughs> but um, so what? anything else that you see out of this that, that you find interesting? Yeah. Uh, you know, as, as we go through the, the narrative of, of the scripture, the allegorical language that Ooh, fancy that David doesn't use right. is almost as intriguing as the metaphorical allegorical language that he does use. Because mm. check this out, he could have picked any a- animal. When David was looking around the landscape of the livestock, he could have said, "I am the I am the rancher, and you are my cows." That's it. I am the rancher, you my cows. Now, wh- what's the difference between a shepherd and a rancher? Hey, not much on the surface, but as we dive deep, mm. here's the difference. Ranchers will whistle, drive, and intimidate the herd. I mean, I, I've been on some, ca- I went on a cattle drive. Oh God, the worst, the worst two weeks of my whole entire really? life. Really? Oh my God. It looks like fun. Yeah, but you're riding that saddle and you're chafing and oh, oh it, that chafing is not good. No. And so, especially if you don't develop the, the 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 calluses the calluses you get calluses you get calluses Cowboys get bro are you serious no I don't oh, want to know you don't want to know that's enough so <laughs> is it cocoa butter yeah, yeah cocoa butter lots so but when I when I was on this cattle drive in Montana because I grew up in Idaho that these shepherds they would whistle drive and intimidate the herd man they would they would uh, have a whip and they would just ha, ha, they, they, ha, ha, they would like ha. whistle whistle and then these cows uh, would be intimidated, and sometimes they'd shoot their gun if the if the if the cows were like really getting uh, reckless and rambunctious. They would do cowboy things. They do cowboy things because ranchers they don't they don't know the cows by name, right? Why right. they don't know the cows by name? You are just a piece of meat. High. You're per- worth twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah, on the hook, right? Right. So ranchers whistle, drive, and intimidate the herd from behind. Mm. Shepherds. Mm. Get in front, beckon and call the sheep by name. He said, "You are my sheep, and I know you by name." So, so David could have selected, if you if you wanted to pictorially describe Jesus or, or, or God as the rancher, which he has every right to be. He were the creation; he can do whatever he wants. But isn't it interesting that God, in His infinite wisdom and omnipotence, omnipresence and omniscience, says, "I'm not going to be behind a whistle drive and intimidate you." I'm going to get in front and I'm going to beckon you. Right. So rather than going, Hey, Roger Archer, you stupid jerk, rebellious sinner. I'm going to. <laughs> no, he gets in front of me. He says, Roger, <laughs> son of mine. Right. Have you ever called a dog? If you yell at the dog and you're not coming, come, you're not coming. That dog ain't coming. I got a, I got a, I got a seven month old puppy. puppy. When he knows I'm irritated, he's not coming Run. to me. Tail between the legs. Go. Right. But when I fake it, I have to fake it to him because yeah. I'm mad at him because right. he just chewed up my slippers or something. And so I got to bring him over. Yeah. But it's it's going to be the gentle call that makes him come over. The and difference. if I come sheep, sheepishly to me, right. I can't whack him anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I that's just, that's the difference with between the sheep and the shepherd. I, I, I was in Israel. Um, I've been there several times, but I remember particularly in 07, in 2007, we were in Bethlehem and I saw thousands of sheep at this watering hole. And I was talking to our guide and I said, man, who owns all these sheep? He goes, Oh, there's like 10 shepherds out there. I'm like, 10 shepherds. Like, how do they come apart? Cause now I'm not being a racist. I'm not a sheep. I'm not an animal racist, but they all look alike to me. I mean, all, all the white sheep, they all look alike to me. Right. It was a dating. It was a dating water hole. Right. They're all trying to hook up. That's, oh my gosh. So I said, I said, how do you tell the difference? He goes, Oh, the shepherd has a specific call for their flock. I'm like, no, nah, no, no, you, you got it. You, I want to see this. He goes, watch this. So one of the shepherds, I'm not kidding. They're all, all the sheep are their face down in the watering hole. And the one of the shepherds goes, <laughs> there's like a hundred sheep go. 
Well, that's a pig town. That, that'd be unkosher. But, you know, they lift up their head and all hundred of, of those sheep follow that shepherd. And then the other shepherd makes the call, followed by the third, by the fourth, by the fifth. And after a while, the last shepherd is there, makes the call. And all of those sheep, they don't follow the other shepherd. Because what did Jesus say? Jesus said, I am the good shepherd and the sheep hear my voice. The sheep hear my voice. The sheep hear my voice. And so when Jesus is, uh, when David is, is talking about these, um, these realities of interpretation of Psalm 23, that the Lord is my shepherd, I will not be afraid, his right. rod and staff comfort me. He is counting on this one salient, irrefutable fact that we are going to understand the voice of our shepherd. That's what I want you to share with us today. This is the time that we have together. What is the best way that you've been teaching people in your church to hear above the noise, above the chatter, above everything that's been going on? Um, Uber this year compared yeah. to last year. Yeah. And here we are, almost 12 months into COVID, uh, 12 months exactly into COVID. Yeah. What do you teach people to hear the voice of the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ? You know, I, 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 it's funny you should ask that. I just finished an eight week series entitled Voice Lessons. Mm. And this series is, I've taught our That's people. That's interesting. I'm starting a new series called Voice Lessons. Hey, hey take it. I'm not. I, I, mean, I might. Imitation is the greatest form of flattery. And your, your pastor would preach it way better than I could. Uh, I'm way original, but I, I, I have no problem. No, using no, 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 no. Because no. I've used shorts. <laughs> we share. I have used shorts. Well, the guys inside, we don't use theirs. Shamelessly use, theirs. use my Kai sermon. Shamelessly. I'm just kidding. Keep going. So uh, I, 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 I've gone through biblical characters of all the people that have heard the voice of God, but not instantly recognized it. Yeah. Like, like when Samuel, the young boy Samuel, was called by God three times, the voice of God spoke to Samuel. And he went up and went to Eli and said, right. you called me, you called me, you called me. He goes, boy, he, I didn't call you, what the bed. He was hearing it, but he couldn't distinguish the difference. Couldn't tell the difference. Right. So there's a subtlety. Um, so what you, what I'm really encouraging you to do, some, pra some practical things, yeah, right? Yeah, give us, give it. Some practical things. Shut down your social media for a week. I've been off for four weeks. Just shut it down. Shut off, I, the, shut off the news. I've been off for four weeks and I'm not, I don't think I'm going back. I, I have to, but I don't want to. I don't really have to. I have my staff throw stuff up for me. And yeah. if I didn't answer your DM, I apologize. I'm not going <laughs> to. Right? I don't want to get into it again. No. Nope. Because let me just tell you, there are competing voices in this world yeah. that want to capture our attention and, and, and draw us away. But that one voice, that one still small voice of mm. the Lord is, is, is still. Yeah. And the reason why we know this is because when Elijah was on the mountain of God and God said, I'm gonna pass by and talk to you. There was an earthquake that shattered the rocks. There was a violent wind okay. and an earthquake. That's huge. Think about it. But the earthquake. Whisper. Yeah. Like I, I grew up in earthquakes. Yeah. A, a ton of them. We've, we've had hurricanes. Yeah. So he doesn't show up in the Violence. earthquake, right? It's violent. Doesn't show up in the windstorm, but he shows up as a whisper. And so you really have to, you have to deaden the space. I, I've been in a studio recording uh, for a lot of different reasons over the years. And one thing they pride themselves, the higher end studios, we pride themselves on dead air space. Like nothing gets through, nothing is gonna penetrate. There's foam in the, in the booths. And we have to get a booth, we have to get a loan with God. That's another thing. We, we can't go through the drive through of McDonald's and expect to get away from the Lord. Yeah. We have to go away. We have to get quiet. Jesus would do consistently away from the distraction of the crowds, away from the mall, away from In-N-Out Burger, right. away from everything that would take his attention away right. and be alone with his father. And I think sometimes because we're, well, especially this year, we have learned how to be alone and it's it's been very hard on many of us because we've distractions are bountiful and we use distractions to self-medicate right so and good I, and i'm just encouraging our people what's the best way to uh, hear the voice of the lord so, give me so, three things okay so number practical. one number one right the actual canonized scripture the word of god everything god ever wanted to say he conveniently put into print mm. <laughs> and i that's the logos of course there's the rhema, which is the wind of God that is consistent with the written. But I, I'd say you need to have a daily discipline, a daily discipline 
of ingesting the word. Some people say like, well, I don't understand it. Well, it understands us mm. because the word says about it, it. The word of God is a lung giving breath and a womb giving birth because it's alive and active. That's mm. what it says about wow. itself. The second thing that I would say is get with people that you trust that know Jesus and don't have surface conversations, but have some deep conversations. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I want to be around people that are going to just speak deep things uh, about me, about our relationships, about what, how they see the world, how they see the relationship with God. And don't, don't be afraid just to have some depth in your conversations. And then number three, I would say, um, start a journal if you don't. And what my wife and I are doing right now is every day we're writing on a slip of paper, something that God speaks to us, we're putting it in a jar. Mm. And at the end of this year, we're going to, we're going to go through that jar Wow! and we're going to see what God has said. And we're going to take out the highlights and make like a, a montage. Thing. I like that. Yeah. I like that. That's a so, great idea. Little tips. So the word, get around people. Conversation, deep conversations. conversations. And what's the third one? The journal, the, the, the journal, writing down of the, writing down. Of the words. Yeah. Awesome. Church, I hope you've been blessed and thank you for being with us on Deep Dive Wednesday. And we look forward to this weekend where it is going to be another great weekend at Inspire Church yeah. online and in person as well. And uh, until then, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he turn his countenance toward you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and grant you peace. I'll see you guys this weekend. We love you. Aloha. Aloha.